Hey, what's up, Monday Club? It's Peter Bois here. Remember last week I told you to check your sound settings before you started recording your podcast? Well, I didn't, and I have crappy audio for about 19 minutes. Then I realized what I did and changed it up, so that's good. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the show. Welcome back, Monday Clubbers. Yo, so today we are going to have an amazing Monday Club meeting. Uh, we are going to be talking about uh, what we did this week. We're going to be talking about spring break. We're going to see a really, really, we're getting highbrow. We're talking about the BBC. We're going to have our debate, Pete versus Gus, one-on-one, mano a mano. It's going to be amazing. Plus this week's teachable moment. Check it out. Happy Monday, Gus! Oh my God! Happy Monday, Pete. How are you dude, doing, brother, I'm doing amazing. I'm doing really freaking good, dude. How are you? Doing wonderful as well. Uh, I am so happy. It's Monday. I had, I had, I. You know, sometimes when vacation is more stressful than actual work week. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Where you're you're on vacation and and like I travel for a living. You would think that being on vacation is just like a, a natural extension of travel. No, absolutely not. This this week, this spring break has just about killed me. Like I'm so happy to be back in my office hanging out uh, for Monday Club. No more activities. <laughs> no more activities. <laughs> I am done, dude. Oh well, I can't wait to hear about it, man. Cheers, Monday hey. Club. Cheers. We're wait. What are we cheersing to? We are cheersing to something pretty highbrow. The BBC. <laughs> we are going to cheers <laughs> to the BBC. Did you see the video? Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, it's that, all over Facebook. You've probably <laughs> seen it too. <laughs> if you if you don't know what we're talking about, there's this uh you know, BBC reporter who it looks like he's not a not like their normal guy. It's like some guy that they hey, we're gonna throw it to Mike over here in his home office to tell us this one thing he spent his entire life trying to research. And as he's talking with his straight tie and his, you know, nice British accent. His kids come in and just jack it up for him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's kept such a straight face. He's to, they're like talking something serious too, like about North Korea or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I know, and 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 you just see his kid just come, just bossing in with their shoulders all going back and forth, and it is hilarious. What's the the funniest part about that for me is I can totally see my kid doing that. Like, <laughs> like you know, I, I, like all sympathy is on this guy for me because you know I can totally, totally see Bryce just interrupting something important like that and and walking in and ruining it for me. <laughs> yeah. You're now live for three million people, and, uh, <laughs> and here comes your kid coming in, subject, <laughs> singing Korea the peanut butter song. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Did you see the guy's face when that was happening? Yeah. He, he just had this face like, "I'm gonna kill my kid. I'm just, <laughs> I'm gonna kill. Him. I'm gonna put him up for adoption. It's gonna be fine." <laughs> uh, uh, so cheers to that guy. Man. Yeah, cheers to cheers. that guy. One day club. To, cheers. Way to get through it. <laughs> Clink again. I, I keep clinking that. There you go. <laughs> hey, Pete, do you want to remind drinking? everybody? Oh, I, I'm drinking. Oh, my God. So, so last I, w- I had a blast of taste in my mouth, and <laughs> I wanted to know. <laughs> Here, you first, man. You oh, first. What are you drinking? I am drinking. Uh, last week, I had uh, a Magic Cat. This week, I have another Magic Cat. It is called Demo Black IPA, Limited Engagement. It is uh, It's very good. It's... You're gonna say something? Yeah, I I gotta tell you, man, and I hope we're still friends after this. I am not a fan of the IPAs. Uh, you know what? Me neither. I was just about to say that. I uh, I do not generally drink IPAs, and uh, every once in a while, though, I find one I like, and this came in a variety pack. And usually, the IPAs I wait for somebody else that likes them to come over so I can pawn them off on them. <laughs> right. And but uh, this is really good. Um, it's kind of like a kind of like a stouty IPA, so it's. Got a little, uh, it's a little smoother, not as. Bitter. Oh, that, that's nice. I, I, you know, I, I like the dark beers. You know, I'll go for a Guinness or a or a stout, um, and I like the ambers. But the IPAs, man, usually it's it's like drinking liquid tree bark to me. <laughs> so, uh, so last week I was super highbrow and I was drinking my, you know, my Cabernet Sauvignon. You know, 
This week, I got to yeah, yeah. This with all the tannins, that's right. This week, I got to say, uh, one, I've pre-gamed a little for this for this episode, so we're gonna see how this goes. <laughs> Two, I I'm kind of running low on the old alcohol spectrum, and so uh, I had to kick it. Uh, you know, high school freshman year of college style. I'm drinking a old school screwdriver. It is Tropicana orange juice and Tito's vodka. Oh, nice. <laughs> With or without pulp? Uh, no pulp, man. No pulp. No, wow. no pulp. You know no, what the best orange juice is for mixed drinks? What? Simply orange. Why is that? Uh, it's delicious orange juice. Uh, I find uh, Tropicana. Do you say you're doing Tropicana? Tropicana, yeah. You know what would be really bad? Sunny hmm. D and vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Sunny D isn't even it's it's not even a noun. Yeah. Like it doesn't classify into any of the any of the orange juice flavors. It's just orange colored drink of some those, <laughs> so, of some substance. Those commercials though used to make you want to drink it so bad. <laughs> but uh, uh simply orange. So good. Uh I, I don't know, it's a less acidic than Tropicana for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to just go ahead and tell you something about me that y- you probably don't know, my friend. Uh, I, if I have one of those weird ticks, my weird tick is that I cannot stand seeds in my orange juice. Hmm. It, 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 I get super gaggy when, <laughs> when I'm, if I'm drinking, if I'm drinking, you know, freshly squeezed orange juice somewhere or whatever, and I'm, you know, I don't mind pulp. That's fine. I, you know, that's part of an orange, but if I'm drinking some orange juice and all of a sudden a seed flies in my mouth, it's like everybody out of the pool. I will, I will, I don't care what restaurant it is. I will spit it out all over your white. Oh, pump, your white like if you get like some fancy fresh squeeze, fresh squeezed OJ. Yeah. Yeah. It's awful. It's just awful. Hmm. I can get behind that. Yeah, yeah. yeah? Well, I good. Don't, I don't like. I, not maybe maybe not as bad. I would. I would not like it. But I probably would not uh, have a uh, have an episode. Here's here's how much my <laughs> wife loves me. She loves me so much that when we do get uh, freshly squeezed orange juice, which you know, let me not act like that's all the time. But when we do, she goes through and she strains it for me, and Aww. and takes out all of the seeds because she just knows how bad. Does she cut I your crust it. off too? No, I don't mind crust. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So, uh, all right, all right. Are we continuing our our Monday Club? Monday, that was two. You know, you know. <laughs> I I knew what you were thinking. All right. For those of you who didn't listen to last week's episode, we decided that we were going to do a Monday Club drinking game where every time ah! anyone, God. Everyone, every time anyone says uh, the word Monday, whatever, uh, then you have to take a sip of your beverage. And let me also for, you know, uh, PSA, if you're driving, please don't consume a beverage except for water or juice or, you know, maybe an energy drink of some sort. Uh, you know, be safe out there, people. Something that will help you in your endeavor, not, uh, not make you crash into a telephone pole. There you go. There you go. We we need all the all the subscribers that we can get. So yeah, we actually part. don't care about you here. Like personally, we just really want that listener. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love you. We do. And we we, we really listener. really do. Uh, hey, uh, speaking of which, if you're if you're sitting here and you just found us, let me tell you some ways that you can uh, stay in touch with us. You can find us at mondayclubpodcast.com. On Facebook at facebook.com slash Monday Club Podcast. On Twitter at Monday Club Pod. That's just Monday Club and then P O D. Uh, Instagram is at Monday Club Podcast. And you can email us directly if you think that we got something wrong uh, or just to, you know, join into the conversation at uh, Monday Club Podcast at gmail.com. We seriously love hearing from you guys. And uh, we can't wait to uh, to take your criticism and put it on the air. So uh, let's get that started. Yeah. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Just a strong, yeah. Oh, yeah. dude, Thank there's, you. Somebody, there's somebody else that needs a shout out. And that is our good friend uh, DJ Z, Mr. Zach Holder, who created that intro and outro that you Oh, yeah, you want to listen Monday to it again Court. a little bit? Yeah, yeah let's this, do it. Yeah, this yeah. is for you, Zach. That's the drums. Mm. Classic Monday Club rock and roll 
driving. Yeah, it's like... Thank you, Zach. You're awesome. You're awesome, man. Thank you so, so, so much. Dude, so uh, I, I mean to ask you, uh, how how was your week? Did you because our spring breaks are at different times? So yeah. how, did you did you get to do anything? Were you just stuck in the office? What were you doing? Uh, I you know I it's been a quiet month. Uh, every once in a while, I have one of these where I uh, am not on the road much, and this is one of those months. I am just kind of being home, working in the office. Uh, not a lot of interesting stories besides cooking dinner <laughs> and working and trying to book shows dude you're selling yourself sh- short man because last time you and i had a monday club you were in one office and this time you're in a new office oh yeah i had uh, a corner of my basement redone i got kicked to the basement to the dungeon and uh and the carpenters finished and it looks wonderful we have this beautiful uh fake wood floor looking going on here and <laughs> Uh, but they, they look actually really amazing. They're at like Home Depot and stuff. The, uh, they're like, I don't know. It, it goes in like wood. It's like puzzle pieces together. <laughs> and uh, the walls are painted. It does not look like a basement. It, but it's weird, though, because if I walk out that door right to my left, it's like workshop, basement, beams, and insulation, <laughs> all the normal basement stuff. Yeah, dude, but I'm so happy for you, man. Like, you have your own... You have your own man cave. You, you know, you, you have your own complete space now. It is cool. So, so congrats. Thanks, man. It's out of the way. I did, have, I did have my own space earlier or before, but it actually technically wasn't mine because everyone could see it and everyone could put stuff in it. It was like a temporary holding spot for things, uh, but we're turning my old office into a playroom again for the little one. Now, let's let's be fair. Your, your, your little one used your office as a playroom anyway oh, so basically yes. they won right yeah but he thought my things were toys <laughs> well, they are <laughs> technically but <laughs> not to put in your mouth <laughs> <laughs> when uh when when pete and i are filming these uh and we're looking at each other the very first time that pete and i did one of these on air he's he's you know we're we're communicating via the the phones and whatnot and Pete looked in the background of my office and saw like a row of Nerf guns just, <laughs> just like lined up in the back. Uh, so, so I totally get you, man. I feel and, you. I'm, I'm so happy for and you. And a dinosaur comforter. And a dinosaur comforter, because <laughs> that's how we roll yeah. in the Davis house. <laughs> but you had a big break, man. You've been oh like, uh, you've been out doing fun. Oh man. So, so, so uh, I've had a crazy spring break. We went to. Uh, my my wife got to travel with me uh, to uh, two different shows, uh, one in Baltimore and the other one in Minnesota. You were in Baltimore? And, really? Yeah, I was back in Baltimore. <laughs> yeah. Baltimore's a running theme. <laughs> it is, it is, man. So I, uh, we, we were in uh, Baltimore first. And uh, we spent three days in Baltimore, uh, you know, two days after our after our show that was there. And then the next week we went to Minnesota and we stayed at this place uh, in Minnesota in St. Paul called the St. Paul Hotel. Now, shout out to them, like for real super plug to them. They have the best bar I think that I've ever been to. I'm going to say maybe ever. Gus, up, up. do you know the levity of this comment? Not levity, the the weight of this comment? I, I do. You because and I have been to pro. some great bars. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, toot my own horn. I've been to a bar or two. This bar is insane, dude. They have, it's a, it's a whiskey and bourbon bar. And they have everything from... <laughs> you know, not, not, to, not to, you know, belittle anybody's opinion, but Miller Lite... All the way up to a, uh, a, a whiskey that they have there that is seven hundred and fifty dollars a pour. Whoa! Not a bottle, a pour. So you get you know, you know, two fingers worth of, of whiskey, and and that's it for seven hundred and fifty. So how bucks. did it taste? 
Oh man, come on now. We didn't. <laughs> we're not rolling that hard. <laughs> maybe, maybe when you and I get twenty thousand subscribers, we'll go and we'll share one. Oh, okay? deal, deal. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, this this bar is amazing. It's you know beautiful wood. They have all of these bourbons and whiskeys and scotches uh, displayed up on the wall. And uh, Shannon and I went there, and we sat down, and we were sitting at the bar. For three and a half hours, okay? We only ordered one drink each in that three and a half hours. The rest of the time, the bartenders just kept bringing us drinks, you know? We were laughing and having a good time. We were meeting our neighbors to the left and right. We were talking to the bartenders, and they took such good care of us, uh, you know, they would say, well, what kind of stuff do you like? And we'd say, well, we like this kind of drink, you know? And the bartenders would just disappear and then come back with this gorgeous, gorgeous drink. And by the end of our three and a half hours, we had both had four drinks and two appetizers. Now, when I say that they brought the bill and I was terrified, I mean, <laughs> when they brought the bill, I was, you know, we were going to pay it, you know, we were going to pay it, but I was seriously concerned for my child's you know college fund you know looks like he's Three. going to state school <laughs> that's right i hope you're in the top 10 percent, pal you better <laughs> you better learn to read anyway they brought the bill our bill was 73 dollars which they could have charged for any one of those drinks for either one of us wow. but it, they took such good care of us and and Shannon got so slammered off that experience that we had reservations for an hour later, and we barely made our reservations. Like, she went upstairs and took a 20-minute power nap after that experience. <laughs> uh, but anyway, dude, shout out to the St. Paul Hotel and their bartending staff. They're, you know, they're, they're iconic bartenders. They took just such good care of us made sure that we had a good time, made some specialty cocktails for us, and made us feel welcome. So, uh, seriously, shout out to you guys. Um, what was weird about that, though, we, we, we left Minnesota where it was 12 degrees. We flew home on Sunday. On Monday, yeah. I left... The, <laughs> nice! Good catch. Mm -hmm. On Monday, I left to... A water park in Texas, an outdoor <laughs> water park. So we went from 12 degrees to 76 and hot with, uh, I took uh, uh, Bryce and two of his uh, kid friends to this water park. Interestingly enough, we, we stayed at a condo there in, uh, in, at this water park. It's called Schlitterbahn. Uh, if you've never had a chance to go, uh, highly recommend them. Uh, the one in uh, in New Braunfels was is the oldest one. It's also rated on the Travel Channel as I think the best water park of all time. Anyway, we went there for spring break. One of his friends is uh, this kid named Solomon, who was on uh, Master Chef Junior. What? Like yeah. TV? Like the TV show, Master Chef Junior. And he cooked breakfast and dinner for us for our entire time that we were there uh, at the condo. And so, you know, we had we had an amazing uh, man dinner, you know, with uh, with all these all these kids out at this uh, water park. It was awesome, man. We just had such a good time. But my body didn't know what was going on from, you know, being in snow and ice to laying on a beach and sunbathing. <laughs> <laughs> That uh, I remember. I think I uh, emoji texted you uh, the middle finger because we got two feet of snow that day in Maine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. The rest of the country was in a serious blizzard, and there we were, you know, floating on inner tubes in in the water. It was it was it was epic, man. It was really really good, and it was great to spend that time with the with the boy and uh, you know uh, do our thing for spring break. You got a full on spring break experience. Man, yeah. So that so I was getting two feet of snow, and uh, you were going down water slides. I just want to yeah. say I hate you, Gus. That's all right, man. <laughs> uh, I posted a bunch of uh, pictures on my Facebook and Instagram. So if you uh, you know if the haters are going to hate, you might as well have a picture in front of you because it was uh, it was pretty it was pretty great. Actually, it it really was great, man. Like the 
weather started off it's like about 50 60 degrees and cold and rainy and we already had these uh the condo rented and the and the water park tickets bought and you know i'm sitting there and you know we're gonna go we're gonna have a good time but i was really worried about being at the water park but by the time we drove from austin to new braunfels we got in and it was you know the sky opened up the sun came out and it was just picturesque for the whole time that we were there. So, yeah, man, it was it was it was really awesome. And it's you know it's great to have those father son moments where you're you know hanging out on the water slide yeah. doing your thing. You how know? old how old's Bryce? Bryce is eight years old. Man. Nice man. Did he do yeah. any like daredevil uh, slides that you uh, thought he might not do, or is he kind of? Uh... No, man. Yeah, absolutely. So he's. You know, he's he's eight, and because he had a friend there, what was really cool is they're both tall enough now that I was such a I was I was this dad. I, I was I told him I was like, here's your rules. You two can't leave each other. So if one of you needs to go to the bathroom, both of you go to the bathroom. If one of you wants to go down a slide, either you both go down the slide or neither one of you goes down the slide. <laughs> but you stay together no matter what, right? And they're like, Okay. And they're tall enough that when they stand up in, like, the wave pool, their heads are still above the water. So I just didn't have to worry about them. I, I, I told them, this bench is home base, and if you come back and I'm not here, I'm sitting in the hot tub. And the hot tub <laughs> has a bar. So, you know, me and my... Uh, I had a, Gus uh, loves uh, the buddy system. <laughs> <laughs> the buddy system is where it's at. Uh, uh, I had a friend from high school come down. Uh, and hung out with me and yeah man we just sat in the hot tub bar you know having some uh having some cold ones while our kids ran around the water park and you know took it over it was great man nice. it was so awesome nice that's awesome i uh we have a little water park up uh here and uh do they have that big it looks like a uh, a funnel are you going and you Oh, I know exactly what. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and yeah. you and you go on the big side and <laughs> you basically get flushed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like going down the toilet. <laughs> they should call it a toilet. They should totally. Uh, I've never seen one themed as a toilet though. That would be awesome. That would be pretty great. <laughs> and then they should have little. Uh, your your tubes are brown and lumpy, yeah. <laughs> and it's and it's yellow water. <laughs> yes. Oh my god! Oh, we could make a water park. We would call it sewer. The ultimate water experience <laughs> can you can you imagine the log ride oh <laughs> <laughs> that would be the lazy river the l- <laughs> <laughs> that would be you'd be like going it's like all murky water you're like going through the tubes of a uh, of a the new york city sewer to, underneath this is- this is a terrible, terrible, terrible episode. It's taken. It's taken a weird. It's taken a taken a hard left. Let's get it. Let's get it back on track. Oh, man. I don't know. This is. Some, this, I want to do this. You think anyone it, would go? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Isn't there a place called Dismaland or or something like that? It's like the Disneyland spinoff where they have trash and all kinds of stuff like that. I didn't. That I do you, not know. I have not. Heard I'm pretty of sure there is. I'm pretty sure there's a place called Dismal Land that's just, you know, there's there's just garbage everywhere, and it's like everything <gasps> anti Disney. Oh, uh, a look at Banks. It's a uh, Banksy's Banksy Banksy, yeah, new art exhibition inside a dystopian theme park. Yeah. Oh wow, that is pretty. I'm looking at pictures. Yeah. Dismal land. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, you should all check it out. It's a. They should do a movie there, a zombie movie. A zombie movie at <laughs> Dismal Land, featuring zombie clowns, would be the the penultimate zombie movie. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man, so it sounds like you had a fun time, man. I'm glad. Yeah, man, I did. Yeah, but I'll I tell you what, shoveling. I am so so happy to be home and and you know have a chance to. You know, sit back and, you know, we went from one climate to another and my body just has no idea what's going on. And, and so, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy to be back here on Monday Club. Monday. Cheers. You know what, though? A couple, uh, a couple episodes ago, we were brainstorming and uh, we said we should have a debate on air. And uh, Gus, I think we should fulfill that right now. 
Are and, you ready to do this? Yeah, this might be a reoccurring thing, I think. Uh, uh, all right, all right. I think it's good enough. All right, we'll see so, how it goes. So we, 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 uh, we spun the, uh, the wheel, and we landed on uh, uh, beach versus mountain. Which one is the better place to mm-hmm. spend your vacation? And I will be defending mountains, and Gus will be oh. defending the beach. Oh, okay. I've got beach? Yes. Okay, all right, all right. Because so, the mountains are way better, and I know they're going to win. So whoa, I whoa, want them. whoa, 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 player! Don't don't try to just <laughs> jump the gun here. All, all right. right, here's my well, argument. Wait, you wait, want, no, no. What what are the rules? What are our rules here? Um, are no we punching. doing Are we doing argument, rebuttal, closing argument, or or, or what do you want to do? Are, have you been on the debate team before? You sound like you know what you're doing. <laughs> oh, I, I may really be a master debater, sir. What's that? <laughs> I may be a master debater. Thanks for making me say that twice. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! You should have spent more time in master debating. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've never been in an actual debate. Usually, my debates consist of like yelling at each other until someone cries and goes away. All right. Here, here, here's here's the rules. I'm gonna set. Uh, I'm gonna set a six minute timer. Ooh. Okay. We have six minutes each, or is that total? No, no, that's total for right now. That's that's total. We're gonna have six minutes because I'm not sure I could do six minutes on mountains and such. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. You're gonna, you're gonna. I'll I'll let you have opening argument. Okay. You tell you tell why mountains are better for uh it, it, for a vacation, right? Okay. Then Making it'll notes. be my turn, and I'll 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 tell why uh, why beaches are better. Then you can argue with me. And then we'll have our closing arguments. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So uh, you 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 give me the the signal, and I'll start your six minutes. Wait, I thought you, I I'm not going six minutes on mountains. No, 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 no. I know. I'm just saying this whole segment's going to be six, oh, minutes. six minutes. All right. So how yeah. long do I have for an opening argument? I don't know. I'm going to interrupt you at some point in time <laughs> until your argument's crap. All right. Here we go. Right, go. Set, go. Mountains are the best because, one, they're secluded. When you go to a beach, there's so many people. You have to share your space. In a mountain, you have so much space to yourself. People, uh, there's so much more uh, area. You can spread out. Uh, you can hike. Because there's so much area, you get to explore so many more areas. A beach, you just go up and down. It's sand. all over. You get sand in everything. Every crevice of your body, you're washing sand out. It's an awful experience, and there's salt water. Who wants to swim in salt water? You feel like a dried prune when you come out because it sucks all the moisture from your skin, and you've got this film of saltiness. Who And there's sharks. If you go to a tropical location, sharks. What? In the mountains, you have fresh, beautiful lakes. You go swimming in a lake. It's beautiful. It's fresh. You feel refreshed. It's cool. And then you can go out and hang out on the dock afterwards, and uh, it, that's why mountains are way better. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to talk about this in the in the form of a southern gentleman lawyer <laughs> now. All right. First of all, in my in my in my esteemed colleague's last comments, he did say that there was a dock. Now, I don't know about you gentle folk out there, but there is no docks in any mountain that I have been to unless that mountain happens to be on I say on the beach. Yes, sir. All right. Second of all, you're talking about secluded. Have you not heard of private beaches? Have you not heard of destination vacations? You can go to the beach and have every single experience minus dying in the cold and getting eaten by a bear cat in the beach. That is right. Now, yes, I will concede that there are things called sharks that sometimes live deep in the oceans and that one movie scared everybody away from the beach because of sharks. However, let me just start in alphabetical order talking about things that will kill you in the mountains. A. Avalanches. B. Bears. C. Cougars. I could just keep going on Why in don't alphabetical you? order. I would love to hear what D. <laughs> Really, that's as far as I got to in the Aww. alphabet. But that's as far as you need to go, sir. That's as far as you need you to go. You know what comes with the avalanches? Amazing, beautiful skiing. You cannot ski 
Okay, you can water ski. <laughs> <laughs> but you cannot go downhill. You can't get the thrill of going 50 miles, 100 miles an hour, whatever, you, whatever your uh, adrenaline junkie needs, going down a mountain in the middle of the winter or in the summer. Am- amazing hiking. You don't have to worry about bears. Bears don't bother you. They're just eating their vegetables, of uh, their fruits and their salmon. And I would they- like to just go ahead and interrupt right there. And I am so sorry my esteemed colleague is working exceptionally hard. However, last time I was on Tinder, and let me say to my wife, that was years and years ago, <laughs> that last time I was on Tinder, the number one thing that people post on there is long walks on the what? On the beach, sir. On the beach. No one gives a crap about long walks, hiking up mountains and changing altitudes. They want to see the long walks on the beach. The beach is not a two-dimensional object, sir. You know why? It is a long, you can go out in the water, you can come back, you can go back to your your tent or or whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying. Those people are boring. They want... They want the same, everything to be the same. Sand, every step, the same view, every step, everything's the same. When you're in the mountains, you're di- you're climbing, you're hiking, everything's different. You can find waterfalls. Uh, mountains are for adventurous, interesting people. Beaches are for lazy, uninteresting people. I'm sorry, did you say beaches are for lazy, uninteresting people? Yes. Have you ever heard of a drink called Sex on a Mountain? No, you have not, sir. No, you have not. However, there is a drink called Sex on the Beach, sir, and it is amazing, sir. It is amazing, and I'll tell you why. Because even bartenders know there's that a, the beach is the place to be. There's a whole brewery called Long <laughs> Long Trail. Long Trail. A whole brewery. They have multiple amounts of beer. Long brewery, uh, long trail. You don't have trails on the beach. You have trails in the mountain, and that's you where don't the adventure have trails is. That is on the, the beach. You can canoe on a lake in the mountains. You can canoe in the ocean, sir. But it's the same. It's boring. You just see it's- endless water. Who wants to see endless water? You want how to see many, amazing Let me ask you this. Games. Let me ask you this. How many how many waves do you think are on that placid lake in the in the in the mountains? There is called a lake placid. Did you know that? Right. Does it have waves? Who wants waves? Who I want wants beautiful waves? beautiful crystal clear flat water that I can right. swim in without getting salt on me. You didn't even I address concede, the salt, sir. You I did will, not will, address the salt. The I will salt concede gets, that if you sand. just want a photograph of a placid, flaccid lake, sand. then absolutely go up and climb up in the mountains and get eaten by a bear cat. However, if you would like to go and enjoy what nature intended, the way that the Pangea stretched across the United States and people traveled like like Marco Polo and, and Christopher Colombo, all them people... <laughs> They came across the water, landed on the beaches, and enjoyed themselves. Now, yes, you can talk about the sa- the, the sand and the, and the salt. I would talk about the two S's of the beaches. You know what brings the- syphilis? That's what beaches bring. That's what Christopher Columbus bought. Killed all the Indians. That is our time. That is our time. Oh, that's our six minutes time. I, that was a. I, I totally won with the whole syphilis argument. I think you did not. You did not. You did not win with the syphilis argument. <laughs> there should there should be an argument that's called the syphilis argument in court. Like you know, <laughs> like <laughs> uh, like outlined arguments, <laughs> pre predetermined arguments in court. Oh, All right. damn it! So, 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 so we gotta argument. ask. We gotta ask. So when when uh, uh, when you hear this ar- when you hear our debate. We need to know who wins. Uh, uh, definitively, who wins? It's got to be by more than seventy percent. What? Okay, by more than seventy. Yeah. Where did you get that number? I just pulled it out of my butt. It should be fifty-one percent. Okay, okay, fine, fine. I was trying because to help Pete out, but what but do you call more a draw? Than... You can't have a draw in a debate. All right, All right fine. By more than fifty percent, it's got to be a win. And because we've been on the road so much, here's the wager that we've put between us. The loser of this debate, by judged by you, by voted by you, and we'll tally it up on the, uh, on the next podcast, has to use one-ply toilet paper <laughs> for a week. 
Because one ply toilet paper is the most evil thing that has ever been invented, hands down, bar none, in and the history of ever. You have to buy like three times as much of it, too. I know, which is the whole point of one ply, right? People use one ply or buy one ply to save money because they think, oh, well, I'm saving money. I'm not using as much toilet paper. But that's not how it ends up working. You end up clogging toilets because people have to use, like, an entire roll just to, uh, you know, get themselves, uh, you know, the clean. Or uh, they use the same amount as, like, double ply, and they just have to wash their hands harder. Uh, I'm going to tell you uh, a secret. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I'm just uh, going to. We, we can share. It's just me and you, yeah, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, last, for, the, for like the last three weeks, I've basically been on the road every single day. And that entire time, most places have just been super cheap and had the one-ply toilet paper. <laughs> uh, I got to the point where, uh, uh, you know, maybe this is NSFW, but like where uh, I had some... Uh, so, some some bleeding issues happening. Oh, that is NSF. That is TMI. <laughs> Gus, are you and, trying and to tell me that your ass was bleeding? <laughs> I, I may be hinting to the fact. I'm just a little saying, diaper rash. I'm just saying that one ply toilet paper is awful. <laughs> and so, uh, for any of you who are voting on this, please. <laughs> Please. Oh, man. Sans, uh, 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 the beaches are the best. You can use some bag bomb or butt paste. That works really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so are you a crumpler or a folder? I'm a folder. I'm a folder, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think folding's the way to go. I it don't is. understand crumplers. No, that's very... It's like, uh, how do you use the other side? Right? <laughs> <laughs> are We're you a conservationist? A, are you a are you a, a stander upper or do you just uh you know to wipe? Keep, yeah. Um no, I don't stand up to wipe. Yeah. You do you, do you uh you go back to front or front to back? Mm, back to front. Back to front without standing up. That's like a extra 2 degrees of difficulty. Really? I'm I think flexible. so. How about what what is what is your uh, MO there? Uh, I'm a I'm a back to front. <laughs> I'm like playing it out in my head. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, His I'm right a hand just reached down <laughs> to mimic what actually happens. <laughs> oh my god! Now I, that uh, all you, I would know like to apologize her. to my mom, who's probably listening in right now. <laughs> Intimate. Do your mom's listening. Oh man, probably. I think we swore. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Gus. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Gus. <laughs> Mrs. Davis, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Uh yeah, man. I uh I'm a I'm a back to front, keep you know, keeping it keeping it level, keeping it keeping it seated. Mm. You know. You know what? Uh another here's another argument for mountains. You can just bury that shit. Literally and figuratively. <laughs> I mean, what do you think sand was designed for? It's like sand was designed for castles it always comes up at the back. top. At the bottom is, uh, you know, burying your, uh, you know, your, your business. And uh, underneath that is treasure. Yeah. So, Gus, I feel a little closer to you now. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we uh, I feel like we all learned something today. Are we doing? Are hey, we doing we'd like two? to hear from you. What are you a back to front? <laughs> <Are> you... <laughs> Please send all the pictures you want to Gus Davis at Gmail. <laughs> no, that's not yours. <laughs> no, seriously, send him pictures. I don't. <laughs> oh, oh man. Uh, uh, all right. Definitely let's, let's though, go, we want to know who won the beach versus mar- uh, mountains argument. And Absolutely. Gus does not get bonus points for having a really fun Southern accent. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we doing? Uh, are we doing debate number two? I think. Yeah, we. we sh- yeah, we might as well. We, all right, cool. All right. Uh, so um, here's the debate topic: Is it okay to use what you, aka we, or maybe you, if you are a magician or mentalist, know from magic and mentalism in relationships in the matters of love? Are you cheating because you know? "Quote unquote tricks to make people do things that you want them to do. You know a little more about psychology, about human nature, about how to uh, manipulate people, perhaps because uh, you're a performer. Is that okay to use that in relationships? Let me go ahead and start this one off. I don't know if this is so much a debate as a discussion, right? Like, okay. unless you want to, do you want to debate it? 
Um, no, we can talk about it. All right, let's just talk about it, man. Let's let's uh, let's have some some uh, sit back and, and 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 just real talk time. All right. So so here's the thing. This this topic came up uh, from a relationship I was in a few uh, you know a few years ago, and uh, uh, here's the way it went. I was at the time studying uh, neuro linguistic programming (NLP), and I had found a book called Verbal Judo, which I was reading for the sole purpose of dealing with a relationship that I was in, okay? And my uh, partner at the time, she came and uh, she we were having a, an argument and she got so mad at me because I was using these techniques that were in these books to deal with our argument. And her point was that I wasn't being genuine in our argument i was looking for ways to use these tricks of the trade through uh to to win my point of view whereas i was saying hey i am using all the information available to me to argue this the best possible way and uh and so yeah i wanted to throw that out there to you man what do you think do you think it's it's cheating to use you know, you you know you know some mentalism. You know some uh, the way people think. You know how to influence people's decisions because of the magic tricks that you do. Do you think that's cheating to use that in a relationship versus uh, versus you know just sitting there and trying to uh, you know argue or converse one on one without using all of the things that you know? Um, I don't think it. Like cheating in the argument sense, obviously not. You're not cheating on her with. Uh, let me think. Um, I don't think it's cheating. I think uh, it might be. Um, it's to me. It sounds like when people memorize. Okay, say you have a. Okay, say there's. All right, usually on hot topic issues. Okay, say. Um, I don't know. I'll. Uh, <clears throat> on a politics or something of an issue in politics, people will want ready-made arguments, right. To like fire back in an, in a, in an argument. Right. Cause they, cause, uh, so they like kind of memorize this one thing and I'm, I'm probably guilty of this. I'm definitely guilty of this too. So you, you form this great argument that you just wait for someone to bring up this, this conversation again. So then you can use this argument. It's, it's almost seems like disingenuous because you're not necessarily, I feel if I'm understanding you right, it's not necessarily listening to the other person and really taking into account what they're saying. You're just trying to win the argument instead of trying to come to a resolution or an understanding. See, and if I, the, I think if the goal is to just win an argument, sure, it's a great idea. But if maybe in a relationship, and uh, I have a psychology degree to not back this up. Uh, <laughs> I do not have a... But uh, in a relationship, I guess uh, my take on it would be that if you're just trying to win that argument, I, I definitely think in one part of my brain, I'm like, yes. And then on the other part of my brain, it probably doesn't do much good for the other person and for the relationship as a whole because, you know, you're not trying to uh, find that common ground. See, I, I, could, uh, I could agree with you if it was your, your sole goal is to just try to win the argument, right? Like if you're, you know, you're on, you're on, you know, you, you, you study debate and all this and your goal in a in a relationship type argument is to not listen to what the person's trying to communicate but to try to actually win the argument where they paint themselves into a corner and they've said you you say things like do you agree that the sky is blue and they say yes and then you say well do you also agree that you know water is wet and they say yes and then you say well then if those two things are true, do you not agree that the beach is the place to be? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, it, like, you, you, you know, if you try, if you're, if you're psychologically trying to paint them in a corner, I get that that is trickery. What I'm talking about though, is, you know, if you are using tactics that we use as performers to, it's like I'm trying real hard to stay away from the word manipulate, but to to, to, to try to Gus, to that try is to exactly what we do. Guide. We manipulate our audience to believe certain things. That's why a magician is successful. Guide to guide the conversation into a space that is 
beneficial for both parties instead of two people just butting heads one person believes one thing, one person believes the other. You're not ever going to change your mind, and then you're not really communicating anyway. You're just yelling at each other. Hmm. <clears throat> I guess maybe if if there are techniques for better communicating your point of view or what you're feeling or what you're thinking, then uh, maybe uh, it's a good thing. Because uh, some people, uh, you know, I, you know, I definitely have had t- problems communicating exactly what I think or feel at times and if there are techniques that can help you communicate that um but also uh, you're guiding them into a space where you want them to be what if they don't want to be in that space you know what if that space that you think is a better space for both of you isn't the space that the other party thinks that is the better space maybe they want to go somewhere else so you're guiding them into a space that they don't necessarily want to be in yeah but is that cheating is it cheating to uh, Cheating, know how cheating, to guide what that is cheating doing what though you, is it is it unfair maybe unfair is a better word than cheating is it unfair for you to use the s- tactics that you know through you know being a performer or or knowing uh something about how language works so is it is it unfair for you to use those tactics in a in a conversation in a relationship style conversation uh, to to sort of guide it into a space that is more comfortable. So basically the question is, uh, is it unfair to be the smarter person in the relationship? That's exactly it, right? Yeah. Like, is it unfair <laughs> to know more about uh, uh, something and to use your knowledge to guide it or or to have those conversations? So, for example... You know right? what, though? W- yes, it's not unfair, but the other party will feel... Um, they won't feel good about it. Because if they're smart enough, they'll know that you're 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 smarter than them, and you're moving them in a certain direction. But if they're not smart enough, so they have to be below a certain intelligent level, so they don't understand exactly what's happening. But if they have enough intelligence to understand, they'll hate you. But if they don't have enough intelligence to overpower you in that realm, then <laughs> okay. So so that's where we're gonna leave it. I think that's a good spot. To leave <laughs> if they're if they're dumb enough to not know what you're doing, then you know you're in the clear. If they're if they're smart enough to figure out what you're doing uh then you're just gonna look like an asshole for trying <laughs> to, to manipulate them into they'll, something else uh, that they're not trying feel to dumb. do they, they will they'll probably feel dumb and uh no one likes to <laughs> <laughs> all right look we want to hear from you here's here's specifically what we want to hear from you and this is not a joke uh i i genuinely genuinely want to know is it unfair to use Things that you have learned to help guide a conversation. So, you know, like uh, the seven seven habits of highly effective people or, you know, things like that. Is it unfair to use those tactics in a relationship when only one party knows that those tactics and uh, the other party isn't privy to them? Yeah, I want to hear what you think, too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, hit All us right. up on Twitter or uh, email or Facebook or something. We'll have yeah, we'll we'll definitely there. we'll definitely read some of your your posts. We'd love to do that. Yeah, yeah. Which brings right, us to our weekly segment. 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 There's no extra e in there. Segment. <laughs> Teachable moments. <laughs> Teachable moments. We need like a we need an intro for that. We we let's, do. We'll get a we'll get a sound bite for week, that. Yeah. Dude, so uh, this week, uh, this is your teachable moment. Yeah, I have a teachable moment. See, we're continuing with the seriousness, okay? So uh, lately, I've been uh, on Audible. They have these great co- courses where you can, like, learn about anything. You can take a lecture course from any amazing university in the country. I don't know. Maybe the world. I don't know. And uh, I was, uh, I kind of have an obsession with religions of the world. So I like learning what other people believe. And I was... Uh, I've always been actually fascinated with Buddhism just because everyone seems so happy in that religion. <laughs> and I come from Catholicism, which everyone seems feels to really guilty in that religion. <laughs> um, but uh, so I've been studying Buddhism. And uh, what I, the big takeaway, and this is more of, I've been studying 
it's very a historical thing. So it's more academic. It's not necessarily, I mean, they talk about a lot of their theology and, or how they believe and what they believe and things like that. But they, uh, it, you know, it's a lot of more academic, like, you know, like history of Buddhism and how it began and then also different teachings and stuff like that. But one thing that I took away, which is really interesting, is all of our emotional attachments to things in this world cause us suffering, right? So like, if you're, uh, say, a car, right, you have a car that you've always wanted, or maybe it's a shitty car, but if that car breaks down, you're going to feel like, you know, it's going to be painful to you. You're going to suffer because you're going to have to spend money to get a new car or to fix that one up, and it's going to create pain in this life. So it creates suffering. So you have an emotional attachment to pretty much everything in this world. So the idea in Buddhism is to detach your emotions from things in this world connected. And that's all that emotional attachment is connected to your ego. So if you can learn to detach yourself from things in this world, from the objects, then you can stop your emotional suffering. And that is what I took away. And if you can't do that, well, then you should just fill your life with attachments that give you constant pleasure, like beer. <laughs> I like that you mic dropped on light beer. <laughs> Dude, uh so so all of that that you were talking about sounds very much like a uh, like Jedi philosophy. Mm. You right. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like yeah, like uh, in order to be a Jedi you have to detach yourself so that you don't get led towards the dark side for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. So, uh, sh uh at our wedding we had a uh, a, a very diverse group of people, Shannon and I, uh, at, at this at our, at our wedding, and you know, some were super religious, some were super not religious, some were very very atheist, and you know, outspoken about that. And we wanted to have a, you know, an officiant that could include all of those people of all different backgrounds and beliefs and and stuff like that. And one of her friends is a comedian in Virginia, and he. Uh, got ordained as a Jedi Knight, <laughs> nice, so that he could officiate uh, on us. I'm and ordained as well. <laughs> are you really? Yeah, this is like the scrotum story all over again. <laughs> Shut up! Are you really ordained? Yeah, I'm ordained in the Universal Life Church in Modesto, California. I've married two of my best friends. Oh, as a, as as the minister, yeah, as the officiant. I, yeah, I've oh, been okay. the officiant right. in two weddings, <laughs> dude. That's awesome, man. Sorry, Congrats. To... no, 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 that, no dude, that's awesome. So, so uh, anyway, I I just bring that up because uh, he did an, an outstanding job, and he brought that same philosophy of, uh, you know, of non attachment. You know, basically, you know, <laughs> don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, idea and uh, and philosophy. So uh, yeah, man, I I, uh, I get you. I think it's so important to study other cultures, other beliefs, and 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 take the wisdom of those those texts, and uh, you know, just you know, think about them. Nice, yeah. Or just drink beer. <laughs> or just drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, if you had a good time today or you want to tell us how much stuff we screwed up, uh, please, please do. Uh, you can find us on uh, on so many places. You can find us on, us on mondayclubpodcast.com, on Facebook at facebook.com slash mondayclubpodcast. Twitter is at mondayclubpod. Instagram at mondayclubpodcast. Email us at mondayclubpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we promise we will send you a message right back. And uh, thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with us and listening on Monday Club. Yeah, Zach Holder! Woo! <laughs> I love our new music, man. This is great. Yeah, this music is so kick butt. I'm going to be a Jedi. <laughs> I'll be a Jedi. I kind of want to just get <laughs> ordained as a Jedi anyway. I mean, he has the card and everything. <laughs>